Hello. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. I, I I don't think we have a lot of people probably joining today because uh, it's kind of close to the holidays. But in any case, uh, the presentation is being recorded, so it will be uploaded. But um, just let's give it like maybe a few minutes to see some more people join, and then maybe we can get started. Sure. So are you in the East Coast? <laughs> um, I'm on the West Coast. I'm uh, in California. Okay. But I think, yeah. How about you? Yeah, I'm in Bay Area. <laughs> oh, great. All right, cool. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I'm asking because of the timing. The timing is a little bit earlier for West Coast guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but we get uh, audience from several places. So yeah, we do have uh, a bunch also on the, in the Bay Area too, but, uh, but there are also people from other places. So we have Alina just joined. Morning. <laughs> Hello. Is everybody ready for, for the holiday? Yeah, yeah. I think I might not get that many people today because uh, a lot of people are just kind of checked out, you know, for the, for the uh, holiday. Yeah, a lot of meetings have been canceled. Like we had a TOC meeting canceled on Tuesday, and next week we're not having it either. Yeah. I'm sure nothing's gonna go no, nothing's gonna happen next week yeah i guess the week after and then it's 2021 yeah 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 all right let's wait a couple more minutes and we're gonna get started yeah before the meeting starts maybe ricardo you can uh, briefly describe what this seek is about because uh, I know a lot of seeks. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, you know uh, the the seek uh, notion I think started with Kubernetes, right? Uh, they, they, with all the different uh, scopes of Kubernetes, you know, like SIG node, uh, SIG network, SIG uh, API uh, machinery. I think uh, so, uh, and then. Um, because the CNCF uh, started to grow. So Kubernetes, I mean, CNCF started with Kubernetes, right? But the mm -hmm. CNCF started to grow and 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 different projects started to uh, join the foundation or, or started to be donated to the foundation. And in, in, in it, it was all cloud native, but not related to just Kubernetes. So different areas like observability, uh, application delivery, like us, CI, CD, continuous deployment, continuous integration, and then also on the networking side, like Envoy proxy. So I think this, the, the and then the, the CNCF has, or had this structure with the TOC where they, they looked at these projects and they reviewed them and um, and they decided whether they, they, they would be a good fit for the foundation and, 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 and then, with these stages like uh, sandbox, you know, incubation and graduation, but I think what happened is that so many more projects started to get interested in joining the foundation, and the TOC became kind of um, overwhelmed with all these uh, different requests, and 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 then the meetings were only like I think twice a month, and um, so there w there wasn't enough room to to. Uh, provide to, to, to the community uh, or provide time for the community to present and, 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 
and engage the projects. So they started these six, you know, with the different scopes, right? With networking, runtime, uh, uh, you know, CI/CD, and uh, and yeah, and this this is where we are, right? And 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 so we help out the the TOC and and engaging more the community with the different projects, and and so they can present and give a status on some of the projects. And some of these projects are not even part of the foundation. Uh, so they may join the foundation or they may be part of some other uh, foundation, but we just want to engage the community. So there's more in, uh, engagement right, and, and excitement about the, the, all the cloud native space. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. I'm guessing, but other people may ask, so what's the difference between this SIG and the Kubernetes SIG? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. In, I, I think there's a, a ticket open uh, from, um, I think Liz, uh, she's a TOC, TOC chair, and she opened a ticket on renaming some of the six. Uh, so it hasn't happened, and so it may happen next year because uh, there's confusion about what between the naming, you know, this is called SIG and the Kubernetes is also called SIG, right? So, so it, we might change the name, uh, uh, I don't know, sometime next year. So. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Um, yeah, we can get started. All right, we got Quinton. Uh, happy holidays. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Uh, yeah, we can get started. Yeah. Okay. Let me try to try to do this. Um, I was on mute. My apologies. Uh, yeah, I was saying good morning and apologies for not having seen you for so long. It's been yeah. a crazy year. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Good, good. Are you in a boat or something? <laughs> I am, I am. <laughs> nice. Can you see the screen? Oh. Uh, no. Not yet, no. Uh-huh, interesting. I do. Uh, can you see this screen? Not yet. Nope. nope. Oh, I know what happened. I need to click the share. <laughs> How about now? Huh? Yep. Yep. Um, I want to see the slides. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, before we start, I actually just sorry, I joined a couple of minutes late. I just wanted to check in. We 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 have very few people here. Is basically the the chairs and and the TSC representative. Um, do we is this a general problem or is this because it's late in december or um do we need to do anything about that yeah i think it's um one of the reasons is it's late in the in december but um we could use more audience too right during even november i think it was you know generally like eight or people oh, okay. I feel like it's also after after kubecon fatigue a lot of people have checked out for for a couple of weeks yeah i can quite imagine i was uh, i struggled personally to get in here you know the the password is not in the invite and you had to kind of dig into the links in the thing to the notes to then find the password so i wonder if there isn't a bit of friction there as well that's that's not helping um maybe maybe we need to do a little bit of an outreach and just tidy everything up so it's easy for people to find us and join the meeting i also don't know who exactly has this in their calendar i had to work quite hard to get amy to add add it to my calendar it wasn't even there for some uh, time yeah so uh anyway, yeah, yeah, sounds, a slight yeah, diversion yeah that sounds like um yeah, something we can we can do more on, on next year to try to get more people, right? So yeah, sounds so, great. Um, and uh, Quinton, uh, maybe we can actually have a meeting or something and, and kind of brainstorm on, uh, you know, offline. Right? So yeah, makes good good sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So now I I'm going to get us started. <laughs> sounds good. Yeah, sure. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, today I'm going to uh, leverage this meeting to express the Open Yard, uh, which we just um, uh, uh, joined the CNCF, the Sandbox project. Um, this is the um, today. Uh, I'm going to briefly uh, describe what this Open Yard is about, why we develop for this, and what is the main functionality, uh, what problem is solved, and uh, what maybe the next 
direction of this project uh, to the audience. Um, so um, the okay, uh, this is the agenda of my uh, today's talk. I'm going to first uh, describe the background of the problem um, a little bit because I guess many people already know about uh, uh, edge computing, Kubernetes, etc. And I'm um, I'm particular. Particularly, we will uh, describe some challenges um, of using uh, Kubernetes to manage uh, edge use cases. Uh, then I will describe the design and uh, uh, I talk about some use cases of the open yard in the real products, um, but not in many details, um, but just in high level. So, okay. Um, so uh, edge computing is a kind of a new kind of computation, uh, paradigm compared with cloud computing. Well, in the cloud computing, everything, uh, uh, people put data workloads to the cloud and uh, run a service in the cloud and get results. Uh, but for the edge computing, uh, it is kind of doing in the opposite way in the sense that uh, the actual computing happens in the edge side, uh, regardless if it's the far edge or neo edge or just edge. Uh, there is a centralized uh, place to collect the data and uh, do the orchestration. Um, the centralized place can happens in the cloud, maybe, and that's the kind of a uh, common way that people did, or happens in the on-prem cloud, in on-prem system. But uh, anyway, the idea is uh, we run, in general, the workload is running the edge, and the workloads run kind of distributed algorithms. Uh, you can think about it like MapReduce, big data, uh, even AI algorithms. Um, they take the algorithm, take the local data as the input. So uh, then they send the results back to the center and uh, the entire workload, uh, most likely we are going to be managed by the center. Um, there are a few characteristics that are driving this model to the production and the people tend to use it because this model has a few advantages like uh, they have low latency uh, in terms of the response time of handling data because the network trans transformation delay is kind of reduced. Uh, they have lower bandwidth requirement in the public networks because um, many data uh, data analysis and the computation happens in the edge side. Uh, there's some kind of autonomy requirement in the sense that um, even, if, even if the cloud edge net network connection is down, uh, the application still can runnable in edge and provide a service, uh, which is pretty important in some like uh, content library uh, use cases. And the last one, last but not least, do they have better security and uh, privacy model because um, many data, some sensitive, sensitive data does not have to be sent to the cloud, which can be a concern for many people. Um, uh, just going beyond that, there is a kind of new uh, model is called cloud edge computing. Uh, basically, it's kind of a, cloud platform that unites the cloud um, edge nodes and IoT devices. Uh, so this is, uh, so compared with edge computing, yeah, there's a, this is a direction of view from the cloud provider's perspective. Basically there is a, a cloud which manages, the, which runs the centralized control plane. And in the edge side, they have compute, compute nodes that are closer to the device and data. Uh, and there is a device Layer which which points to all the you know remote devices uh, that can people can connect to and points to the remote environments. Uh, those devices typically are the data generator, and the, which uh, provides the data and handled by all the applications running the edge. Uh, so, so this is a kind of pretty uh, interesting um, architecture or framework uh, in, in terms of the edge computing in, uh, nowadays. Um, um, briefly talk about the Kubernetes. Um, it, uh, it is a content orchestration platform. Uh, the nice thing of Kubernetes is kind of, um, because it has a nice abstraction of all the infrastructure layer uh, with a well-defined, uh, sort of well-defined APIs. Um, they can provide a unified user experience regardless of which environment they use, um, even in the private cloud or public cloud. Uh, it is a very powerful abstraction, very, very, uh, it's a very powerful point of the Kubernetes. And um, after a few years of growth, uh, I think uh, Kubernetes has a pretty strong ecosystem. Um, uh, it has a, a lot of, you know, controllers or plugins or solutions to resolve, to resolve all kinds of uh, use cases, applications. 
And I think uh, one of the most important uh, benefit of Kubernetes is, is, is it is very highly extensible. And the, the use of a CRD makes you, the, the invention or the, the, the broader use of CRD make the people, make the, the entire system is very easy to be integrated in the other system or provide or extend its, its ability to feed the business logic. So, so that that's my reason. That's a reason why people start to think about all kinds of uh, solution based on Kubernetes to resolve problems, including the edge computing problem. Um, I think uh, Kubernetes itself is kind of fits on uh, kind of fits on the uh, edge computing model because it is still uh, a layered you know design. It has a Centralized, it has a centralized control plane and the nodes, and they are they are kind of layered the design, and, and uh, uh, it is a distributed system. So all the you know, design like uh, any of them are, are are using the the um, the uh, kind of has to consider the case that uh, it is running a distributed system. Uh, the reliability they need to resolve the, all the kind of reliability issues. Uh, entire the controller logic, the reconcile logic can tolerate you know transient failure um, because it has a retry logic and all the least watch mechanism which is uh, used in most uh, controllers and many plugins uh, are designed to handle failures. And especially in edge case, the, the failure is we have a, the failure scenario. We need to handle more through the scenario uh, or more problems in terms of the reliability. Uh, availability issues because um, the, there is an obvious, um, you know, um, differences compared with uh, cloud computing is that the environment in the edges, uh, the networking to the cloud to edge networking is not very reliable. Um, so, so, uh, so, so, if you look at a Kubernetes layer, so it kind of fits the edge computing layer, uh, and the, the nodes. The only difference is uh, the nodes can be now. Uh, presented or uh, managed in the edge side instead of the cloud cloud side, and the, uh, the the application running in the edge nodes can still you know manage and manipulate the devices and that is spread everywhere. So yeah, so that that's a reason we think you know Kubernetes naturally can fit the edge architecture, um, but for from very high level. Um, but indeed, we will have have some challenges if you really want to use Kubernetes to. Uh, in edge, edge use cases. Now I'm going to describe some of the challenges that we have been uh, uh, found. We, we have been found, and uh, and uh, some some um, some of the points that we are going to address in the yard project. So okay, uh, here are a few challenges in terms of the uh, how, how to leverage how to use Kubernetes to manage the uh, edge edge application. The first one is unreliable network. Um, the the it is kind of common in the edge, in the, in, the, in the case that the cloud to edge networking is not very reliable. And in some, sometimes this network problem is not hardware problem. Sometimes it can be a, you know, an administrator decision because uh, there, are, there are use cases that people kind of local admin just trying to avoid, you know, uh, public cloud networking and they just can cut off the network connectivities for whatever reason, like to save the bill, save the cost. Um, so, yeah, so in a word that uh, it is kind of, you should expect that sometimes the, the, the cloud and the edge nodes, there's no network connection. And sometimes this is not a, just a transient part. It, it, it is not a transient problem. It can take for quite a long time. There is no cloud and, and the edge node connection. Um, this is problematic for the Kubernetes architecture because um, the node, the, 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 the Kubernetes running in a node is not a It is stateless, but it has to rely on uh, talk to the API server um, to, 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 to get all the object status once it restarts. Then we have a problem that if the node and the API server is not connected and the node is the restart, uh, all the previous running pod cannot be uh, recreated by the Kubernetes because Kubernetes just cannot simply get the states of the pods and all the get a spec of the pods. So that's one problem. Another thing is 
uh, in the cloud side, uh, it, it, we only have problem. We, we also have problem if the cloud and no, there's no network connection because API server relies on the Kubernetes to send the habits to indicate the health of the node. Um, there is a node controller in the Kubernetes. Um, if it doesn't receive, if the API server doesn't receive the habit for sometimes like say a uh, minute, now the node controller will think the node is offline. And from the app's perspective, um, node controller will start to evict parts. Then this is another problem that people in the cloud side uh, will find the part is getting deleted uh, if there is no uh, cloud and edge networking. Um, another problem is um, kind of kind of uh, unique in the edge side. Um, um, it, it, it is that uh, the network connection may be okay. There is not there is network connection, but maybe it's one directional, uh, unidirectional um, network. Basically, it is okay. I uh, use the uh, SNAP technique to to allow the, the edge node to access the public cloud uh, API server. But the reverse direction is not allowed uh, because for the, for all kinds of reason because the edge node may stay in the internet, so then then the problem is that if if the cloud side cannot access node, some well known or some people a lot of people rely on the Kubernetes APIs to retrieve log and use ESAC to do the debugging. This kind of functionality is broken if there is no network connection. Uh, from the, the cloud to the edge. So that's another problem that we are we are going to face in the edge scenario. Um, the third one is the, uh, there is a need for pool well application management. Or what I mean pool here is, is you, you can think think of it is like the region um, because it is kind of common that uh, in the edge in the edge use cases there are a bunch of nodes that are spread uh, across different regions. Um, the region can be a you know factory. Uh, it can be a IDC, uh, some 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 independent IDC. So there is so so the the, you know, the environment would be much much more complicated compared with uh, compared to a sing, the centralized the you know cloud provider cases. Um, then in those cases, if the application runs in different let's say regions, uh, they may have different you know network setup, different network configuration. And, uh, uh, and and it'd be nice uh, uh, and it is kind of required that we, we, we can have ability to, to do the inter, intra region management uh, such that uh, if the applications try to avoid running applications in same application replicas spread to different regions. And if there are there are service and the, they want to talk to each other and they should try to avoid um, making the cross region networks. Uh, um, so this is another uh, kind of requirements. So uh, in OpenYard, we are trying to address these uh, three problems, maybe. But uh, there are also, indeed, there are also other problems uh, which uh, are currently not handled by uh, OpenYard, but it points to our future work. Uh, the, the obvious problem is the resource requirement. Uh, I think uh, this, uh, this, were, this was a big problem in uh, a few years ago because uh, I'm guessing you guys are pretty familiar with the Kubi Edge, uh, and uh, and I think one of the main advantage of Kubi Edge is uh, it can trying to resolve the resource requirement problem, um, um, because I think in a few years ago the the, the edge nodes that are running the entire software stack software stack for the Kubernetes has a limited resource in terms of the CPU and memory, um, but uh, indeed the Kubernetes node components such as Kubernetes, the Kubi Proxy. Uh, even the CRI consume uh, not a huge amount of resource, but it's kind of a non negligible kind of amount of resource to run those node components, uh, which can be a problem uh, to, 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 to run Kubernetes in edge. Um, but, but in the yard, uh, we are not going to handle this problem at this moment. Uh, uh, in the next couple of slides, you will see in open yard, we are trying to leverage all exist existing Kubernetes components. So, um, it, 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 so we kind of have to rely on the Kubernetes community to do the, you know, cost reduction or, or all these, you know, uh, node components. And the last one is the device management. So at this moment, uh, I don't think that we have a kind of, you know, for, especially in the Kubernetes side, uh, for the device management, there is no kind of uh, standard model and an, an abstraction. People uh, used to just. Um, uh, created their own CRDs to describe our device, like what uh, Kubi does. 
Um, this part is kind of pretty open area. Uh, we uh, open yard didn't handle it because um, uh, we don't we don't have a support in the node size to support the various uh, IoT um, protocols like uh, MQTT protocol. Uh, we, we we don't do that. Um, but uh, it is indeed uh, one of our future direction to to support that. Uh, but we probably will do some. Other ways is that instead of uh, create everything from the scratch by our own or by the open yard community, maybe we can leverage some exi existing framework or or infrastructure or, or yes or system that uh, pre um, open source the uh, open source the system that are primarily designed for managing IoT devices only. So we we are thinking about doing that kind of uh, uh, integration in the in the future. Mm. All right, so um, so next I'm, I'm I'm going to describe the, the high level design of the entire open yard. Um, so the basic idea is uh, the, the, the the primary design principle that for the open yard is we are trying to extending the Kubernetes uh, without an intrusive the modification to all the core components. So uh, come to so with uh, with this um, primary goal, then we can. Uh, we can kind of achieve the second goal is like we we are trying to have a solution that is fully compatible with upstream uh, Kubernetes from an API perspective. Uh, but we are indeed trying to solve some problem like you know, support some very uh, uh, typical edge um, characteristics like autonomy, uh, um, the cloud edge communication problem, and some poor wire management, and we want to support the heterogeneous computer uh, uh, computer in the edge side. Um, and we want our solution to be, you know, Kubernetes native in the sense that we 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 trying to resolve everything by implementing the add-ons, plugins, and we we will quite uh, the entire open yard. We are going to be keep up with the upstream release. Um, so so once the upstream you know release a new version, uh, we will release a follow-up um, release. Well, within a couple of weeks, that's that's our plan, um, hopefully. And uh, we have uh, we we're trying to achieve the one hundred percent API compatibility in the sense that everything, if you have a uh, operator application, uh, whatever YAML that works in the you know cloud based you know cluster, it should work in a Yard cluster um, without much. I think without any modification from the user's perspective. That's our goal. Uh, all right. So this figure, this figure, so kind of uh, brief, briefly describe the high level uh, the open yard architecture. So it has two parts. So it has uh, cloud side components. Uh, it has edge side components. Edge side components are the, are the components running in the node. Um, cloud side control, controllers is, is kind of pretty typical. It is just a bunch of uh, Kubernetes uh, controllers, uh, CRDs, and uh, we have a tunnel. We have a tunnel server running in the cloud side. So that is pretty much the cloud a bunch of controllers and add-ons. And in the edge side, there are about there are some components, uh, which the most important one is the Yard Hub. So it's kind of a kind. Of, it, it, it is a proxy to proxy the traffic flow uh, from the um, node side to the to the um, to the, to from the edge side to the API server, um, but re the reverse direction is handled by a kind of tunnel service, which we call a tunnel. If you look at this figure, we have a tunnel server and a tunnel agent. So this tunnel system was in, in, was invented to handle the traffic flow from the uh, cloud side to the uh, edge side. Um, uh, all the existing Kubernetes components, like you know, Kubelet, uh, Kubi Proxy, or Flan, or other existing add-ons, uh, there's no um, change required on that side. It's, and the only change that they probably need to do is uh, they need to point to the you know, Yard Hub when in 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 its kind of uh, startup parameters instead of points to the API server directly. But that is all the configuration problems. Not exactly. There is no code change required. 
uh, and we, hey, we can, can I can I interrupt you just for one second? Sure. Um, I, I have an in, uh, a question, and unfortunately, I have to drop off the call shortly to go to another meeting. Um, sure. Thank you for a first of all a great presentation. This this looks like a really interesting project. Um, I couldn't help but notice there's there's a lot of similarities with um, Cube Edge, of course, sure. um, and uh, I was just wondering. I understand, you know the. Huawei started the Cube Edge project, and you guys compete almost directly with Huawei in many spaces. Um, other than that kind of concern, are there any um, reasons why you decided to build a separate system from Cube Edge rather than become a contributor to Cube Edge? Or does this solve some problems that Cube Edge does not plan to solve, or are there yes. any technical reasons? Okay. Sure. I can I can I can answer that uh, that question. So. Um, for for Kubi Edge, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with it. The biggest problem that I see is it changed the core kubelet. So it kind of they, they want to resolve the resource requirement problem that yeah. that problem a few years ago. So their decision is uh, to completely rewrite Kubi Edge, get rid of a lot of things, uh, and uh, even they change the basic communication model between that are used in the Kubernetes, like the least watch. They use the WebSocket based communication channel. They create, create their own WebSocket channel to communicate between the edge side and cloud side. So now the problem of changing Kubernetes is API compatibility. So that's a problem that we face. And, and some of our customer was asking, they are hesitant of using the Kubernetes edge because they worry about API compatibility. And um, they, they get it because they read out of Kubernetes, many kind of Kubernetes APIs, they cannot support it. So that may be okay a few years ago, but nowadays they have their own problems because of the API community problems. They are trying to rewrite their, you know, node side components, like their own, their own hub, kind of edge hub, they call it edge hub, to bring back some of, many of the Kubernetes functionality back on it. So that, that, so that's, you know, you, 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 you will see the, you know, problem there. So, so overall, I think the biggest differences from high level is I believe they are going to have their, their own community because they, th there are a lot of solutions tied on their current architecture and the way that they, they make the things work there. It is okay because there are a lot of contributors there, there are a lot of users there, but they probably have their own community. But our, in, in our side, we are trying to leverage the Kubernetes community. So that's the reason we build this system. So if you look at it all the way that we does, well, the API compatibility, API compatibility is always our primary concern. So we are trying to make sure once the system is built, so Intel, the applications that run in the Kubernetes community can be run in the system. So that's, that's a pre, pretty much our goal. And uh, as, as, as you can see, so um, because the Kubernetes has been that way, it is difficult to make them to convert to a plugin-based solution. So, so that's a reason we are trying to think about how can we solve the problem without you know, changing the core component? By just okay, thank you. That, that answers my question very well. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, I have a, a follow-up question on that. So the, what are some of the implications of uh, like um, not modifying the Kubelet uh, code or, or the changes that a Kubelet is doing uh, for this project, right? So like, um, does that mean like performance wise, uh, you might have some penalty or? Um... Um, okay, there, there's a few things uh, I can make the curve. So because uh, first in the Kubi edge, I have to admit that it is much more complicated than our system because it provides more functionality. They, 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 they provide kind of the, the edge device management, which we didn't touch at this moment can simplify the problem. Um, so there could be, as if you look at the, the Intel, you know, architecture there, are, I would say there are one third of the components are trying to hand, handle the device. So um, the performance wise, I don't think because it, it, it is not in the data plane, it's all the control plane kind of thing. So um, the, the performance is not that critical from my perspective. Um, yeah, so the, 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 if you look at the way that we, we do, it, it's kind of the thing uh, uh, um, if you look at, yeah, uh, there, there's some problems loss because you are doing the um, proxy. <laughs> there are some kind of problems loss, but as I said, it's, uh, it's control plane. Uh, is you, you probably have some a little bit delay on, 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 on get the logs of the part. Um, 
maybe not 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 noticeable at all. Um, that that is thing that they can think of. Um, other than that, I don't see I don't see there is a performance issue there. The pre the, the resource consumption that indeed can be a problem because Kubi Edge they are they claim they are binary. They put everything in a binary and the binary is kind of fit a few um thousands of microbytes. Um, but but in my perspective, as long as you use Docker, the memory will be bloat. So it is Docker is not controlled by you. Uh, yeah. So yeah. So yeah. Um, but Kubernetes. Uh, it, so our solutions may consume more resource on the on edge node. Uh, that is for sure. Um, but one trend that I we were finding, or when we talk to a customer, uh, yes, the resource was a limitation a few years ago, as I said. But nowadays, typically in the edge side, or oh, there are, they kind of have a moderate, you know, powerful machine to run these kind of components. It's kind of normal. It's not so the resource is not very hard constrained for, for our primary use cases. Got it. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I have a sorry. This is Diane. I have a follow up question to this whole thing. Just curious, when you're comparing uh, a Kubi Edge to Open your is one of them designed more for being disconnected from the network for longer periods of time, or is it is that similar between the two? I think for that in, in that aspect they are similar because uh, uh, I will talk about it in the next couple of slides. But in general, we are going to both both will catch the cloud side states in the local. So, which means in both systems, if you have you don't have the cloud edge communication, the the edge side. It still can be run autonom autonomously. Basically, once the ISID restarts, they can recover the the pods that it was running. Okay, and then like, what? How long can you be? I, I was involved in something like this recently, where an edge, uh, uh, there was a problem with the edge systems that were had very poor uh, internet connection, mm -hmm. and um, I was just wondering how long are these use cases wanting that disconnected state to go on? Like, is is a day reasonable or is that not reasonable? The day I think is okay, but I, as I said, sometimes the network connection problem is not hardware problem, it's, it's, it's intentional. We, we, we see some cases, some, some companies, you know, network administrators just cut off the line because they said, I don't want any public cloud. I only allows public connection, uh, connect, connection by me. <laughs> I only allowed a few minutes once I need it, Other, otherwise I just cut, cut off the line. So uh, uh, but the, the whole problem is, I think the system will work. The whole problem is um, the longer, you know, the, the network discussion worse, you know, the, the, the state mismatch will happen more. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, because because the, the, the edge side just cannot respond to cloud side. You, you can start, you can create a lot of paths in the cloud, but none of them we are going to be wrong because there is no Kubernetes connected. Okay, yeah, the network seems to be like a bigger problem than the resource. Like you said, a lot of these edge devices uh, have uh, incredible resources now, uh, more than what we would normally have in a server in a data center, I'm, I'm finding. So I think you're, I agree with you on that, but the connectivity still seems to be a problem for people. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, so, so in the IoT, they have a, a few models, um, which I didn't cover in these slides. Um, there's one model is direct connect the IoT device directly to the cloud, uh, which is not a model that we are seeing because we are, we are, we are more like, you know, edge application model, like um, there is kind of a little bit powerful machines running the cloud side and the IoT device just connect to that machine. So, um, so that's the reason um, we, we, we don't have to worry about the problem to install everything in the edge device directly. Then, then we have a problem in terms of the resource consumption. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, what, is, what is the, uh, sorry, what is the resource usage footprint uh, on the node as we are talking the resource usage? Um, uh, I think, I think, uh, um, what, well, I, I, I don't have a direct measurement, but I, I would say some range about like one or two core and the two gig memory, this, but this is my estimation. Um, and I believe if, if you really want, really want to run something, really reasonable workload. So you only have one part, maybe I don't think that's a reasonable workload. If you want you know, hundreds of parts kind of thing, um, in, in, uh, uh, 
then then that that memory that that resource should be required. And you have also mentioned that uh, the Docker is a container runtime. Is it the um, like one hundred percent of the uh, container runtime, or do do people use like Container D or Cryo? It depends, but you if it depends how many customer uh, uh, customization they want to do. If they want to just install the Kubernetes default. Um, okay. They, nowadays, uh, Kubernetes drop Docker, but we are handling a few many cases that Docker still there. Thank you. Okay. So yeah. One more question uh, here. In the, well, please. so maybe you'll go over um, on some of the other slides, but. Uh, uh, some of these edge devices also, uh, and because of what Diane mentioned about network connectivity, some of these devices uh, need to store a lot of data. Uh, sometimes it's like video, right? So, or like lots of information. So do you also have a way to connect to some storage device? Oh. Yeah. Um, oh, so so I, I need to clarify that we are not saving the data for the application. We are only cache the data for the management system like API servers. So we are only cache the metadata, object metadata. So uh, in the local local storage, that won't require many storage for sure. So so I guess the storage would, would depend on, on, on uh, what uh, workloads uh, are and, and what uh, wh whether they want to use some uh, physical or uh, volume configure with Kubernetes, right? Uh, again, so we are not going to cache in the workload data. We are caching the metadata because we know, we only need to make sure if the, the cloud and the edge side network is done, the Kubernetes component can work. We cannot guarantee that the edge application still work. So edge application has to design in a way that uh, if they have their you know own handle of network, network, network offline to a central, centralized place, but as I said, in general, they are distributed algorithm. They run distributed algorithm. They can talk to the neighbor, not to the centralized cloud. They can run by their own. That's the nature. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Thanks. Okay. Next, uh, I'm going to describe um, the Yacht Hub. Um, this figure looks a little bit complicated, but in general, I, I try to go through it. Uh, so the goal of we have an Edge Hub is we're trying to achieve a goal, which is the application availability is still preserved when the cloud edge networking is off. So particularly what we were trying to resolve that is if, if, the, net, if the cloud edge network is off and the, the, the node is, is restarted, the Kubernetes still can figure out what are the pods that I need to start. Um, so, so the idea is we, are, we have a hub kind of proxy all the traffic from the Kubernetes, uh, from the um, Kubernetes node components to the API server. Uh, so the idea is it will check uh, if the network is online or no, offline. If it's online, it will send a request direct to the API server. And we, once the request is re re satisfied, we will save the results, update the results to a cache manager. Basically, if you have a Good networking. The hub, what the hub is keep doing is uh, keep updating the the API servers, the the, the object status by monitoring the um, HTTP request response to the local cache. Um, if if the hub detect that the, the it, it lost connection to the API server, uh, it will you know kind of um, serve the uh, HTTP request from the Kubelet or node components by looking at the local proxy and the get the results directly from the cache. So you can think about a more, more, more intuitive way is that um, if there is a least part API request, if the connection is good, the least request will be sent to the API server and the hub will, will get the response from the API server, get all the list before it sends back to the Kubernetes. Then it saved all the list objects in the, into the local cache. And keep updating every time uh, there is new list request. So next time, if the network is down, if the Kubernetes send the list request again, it will just check the local storage and give the all the parts that they have stored back, and from the list request results back to the um, 
kubelet. So th this is how it does. Um, so basically, the idea is we will cache the cloud metadata locally uh, through the Yadda Hub uh, into the local disk. So currently, uh, there is a slightly difference here. So we use a kind of simplified uh, mechanism is that we don't use a database here. We still use the kind of just text, the, the, the local file, just plain, plain file to save the, the objects uh, in, in the local disk. We don't use a database here. Uh, there, the, um, there are a few reasons. First is, is the simplicity for sure. Second is that the data, the amount of data for the metadata is not a big, is not a big number because think about how many parts are going to run in the nodes. Uh, maybe just the metadata for hundreds of nodes um, maximally. So less than one mic kind of storage is kind of enough to save those data. Um, um, but indeed, uh, but, but again, uh, there are some functionality in terms of the benefits of, other benefits of the uh, database, like a reliability kind of thing. Um, but yeah, that's that's what we choose for now. Uh, we just save uh, as a file in the local local disk for all the objects that we cached in the cloud in the cloud side. Um, that that I need to have some other problem because we recreate parts we are requiring to recover the IP and Mac stuff. Uh, we do see some requirements saying that oh, once you if you recreate a parts, please keep the same IP and Mac for whatever reasons. Um, but we, we, we were trying to achieve that, but that requires kind of supports uh, to the CNI plugins to really to really support that. Um, but uh, our, our kind of Yard Hub and kind of, uh, uh, we, we have some solutions to work with their, um, their CNI plugin to make sure they can, uh, they can keep the IP and Mac once the pod is recreated. So this is pretty much the, uh, the high level uh, view about the how Yard Hub handle the you know the node autonomy problem, basically relies on cache and the dual proxy mode um, to handle. So if you look at this figure, regardless how long your your your, your cloud and the edge network is off, if it's just keep off, they just get everything from the local cache, and that local cache never get refreshed. So that's that, that's kind of a passive passive mode we we solve the problem. Um, all right, so the next uh, part is the tunnel part. So uh, we are trying to resolve the problem that like make the goal of this, the, this tunnel is trying to make sure the API server in the cloud can access the Kubelet and calling the log or the ESC API in the edge. Um, there are a lot of you know, tunneling solutions um, existing, but um, many of them follow the same pattern. It is that uh, in general, it is uh, the remote agent side of your creator, uh, you know, the long uh, TCP connection with the server. Then uh, they use this tunnel, then this works like tunnel and every request come through that tunnel to bypass all the, you know, firewall uh, sitting between the agent and the server. So uh, we, instead of, you know, doing the, our own tunnel server implementation, uh, we designed to leverage the Kubernetes API server network proxy, which is, uh, I think, from the version 1.18. Uh, they start to support this, uh, the API called the ingress selector, uh, uh, which means by sending that, all the you know, uh, network traffic going outside of the API server can be redirected to our uh, the API server proxy, which uh, which is in short is AMP. Uh, we leverage the AMP implementation to to do the to implement the, the tunneling. Um, um, but there there are a few things because the AMP uh, requires our uh, our gRPC uh, protocol. So uh, in any API server, I think after. 118, uh, the API server can send the, the, the request through the gRPC. But before that, uh, there's, it just send the planned HTTP request. To support the older versions, so we, in, uh, we kind of implement, uh, we call the interceptor. So you can see it just like a very simple uh, translator kind of thing. It just, uh, just encapsulates all the you know, HTTP requests to, to become the gRPC request. That's all about it. And the AMP server and AMP agent, they are pretty much uh, the upstream components. 
Um, but we do uh, have some additions and uh, changes on that in the sense that they want to, we, so in, in the upstream AMP server, um, they, they, were, they were choose a random AMP agent to build the, they were, they were um, established the turn, tunnel between the multiple AMP agent to one AMP server. And uh, the AMP server will randomly pick one uh, agent to, to do the network transformation. But in our side, um, we have to do a very explicit the, the, the routing um, because the, if they want to access the node A's couplet, they have to go through, the traffic has to go through to the node A's API AMP agent. So, uh, so, so uh, in, in our project, we kind of adding the routing policy in AMP uh, and uh, to make sure that the, the, and they will find the right connections to connect to to get the to, to communicate with the Kubernetes running the edge node from the uh, cloud side, mm, and and we are trying to uh, uh, upstreaming part of the, our solution in the AMP community as well because this is kind of not the requirement by uh, by our own. Uh, it, it, it by also requires it, it is also requested by other you know um, users to say uh, it'd be nice to add a more speci specific or particular routing policy in the AMP server. The, one question: The interceptor is required to handle the all uh, API versions, right? So when it's is that because uh, some people, you know, have to um, have to keep different versions of Kubernetes or what? what yeah. Uh, yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So because because the <coughs> ingress selector feature is only supported after one eighteen. So, but in reality, many of our, many of customers are running system in lower version, which is like 116. So, or even lower. So in that case, the API send request coming out of the API server is the HTTP request. So um, the AMP server required the input to be the GRP, gRPC format. So we just use the interceptor. You can see, treat it as another proxy, just do a protocol conversion. From HTTP to gRPC, and that's it. There was no nothing more. No. Got it. Got it. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. The next one is the pool of management. Uh, so the goal is uh, we're trying to have a modeling uh, for pool of nodes, um, and uh, we can do a pool based de uh, deployment and application management. So this uh, this part is pretty much leverage the existing way of the Kubernetes, uh, ex uh, extending Kubernetes by using the CRDs. Uh, so in general, so uh, we, we introduce a node pool CRD to manage, to manage a pool of nodes. And uh, we introduce a new uh, workload called the United Deployment to management workloads across different pools. Uh, so, um, so which means uh, if people define say, okay, we have a pool A and a pool B, and we register pool and then pool B in the United Deployment uh, customer resource. This controller will generate, will create and manage two uh, Kubernetes deployments. One respect to the pool A's nodes and one just respect to the, one respect to the pool B's nodes. Uh, and uh, you can specify the different uh, replica, re uh, replica numbers in pool A and pool B and you can upgrade them uh, in the united way or you use in different ways is up to the customers so and and we <clears throat> and we also leverage uh, uh, kubernetes topology of our service to bond the uh, east west traffic so in the past the service model in the kubernetes um, there is no topology basically if you have a service class class ip types of service this you know um, this service routing uh, rules will be updated in the IP table of all nodes. Uh, there's no notion of the topology. So I think in Kubernetes one, after 118, there's a new feature called topology well service. So it, it is kind of fits align with our, requirement, our requirements very well um, in the sense that now they can choose to just update the IP table of the parts of nodes or exactly in our case is a pool of nodes. Then, um, then if the if the if the service ending points trying to talk to each other, 
they are bonded they are bonded to the same kind of pool of nodes, um, which is a very very good feature to fit our use cases. Yeah. And, and and this is also the use case will be people having different pools in different locations, right? So yes, exactly. Exactly. So you probably can have two two factories. They are not very nearby, but they belong to the same company. So you can say you can think about it that way. Got it. Okay. Um, all right. So next, I bring up some use cases. Uh, I, I I won't give some exactly examples of the use cases, but pretty much uh, currently, um, the open yard is used. You can think about it, you can think of it as a edge pass core. So it 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 it, it kind of it, it becomes the foundation to support quite a, a few other pass platforms that build on top of the. Uh, resources that that in the edge side, um, for example, we have use cases that uh, support the IoT pass, um, which is IoT pass is a device is is a pass to manage IoT device very specifically. Then there are, uh, this IoT pass itself has quite a few some components that uh, some needs to distribute it to the edge side, some needs to be distributed in the cloud side. So we run everything. So we so in that platform, all develop all the deployment model is converted to container and using Kubernetes and using the Kubeyard system to manage all the edge side node, uh, and use the Kubeyard system to manage. You, you can think about using OpenYard to management to manage the components and that that below to the parts that need to run in the remote side. Mm -hmm. The same thing happens in the CDN. And a content library delivery. Also, they, there are quite a few services that need to that, that need to run in the remote side. And the uh, and the, the last one is we also have a use case that connect to our AI pass platform. Well, a lot of you know uh, the algorithms uh, for to run the AI AI, AI uh, applications that need to uh, rows rows uh, tools or applications are encapsulating to the. Kubernetes workload and uh, are deployed in the edge nodes. So, uh, so from high level view is like the you know, open is kind of serve as an edge pass core um, to serve other edge platform. <clears throat> uh, this is um, the primary use case or, or very typical use cases for open yard for now. Um, all right, the last I, I will briefly talk about this uh, internal community. Uh, so OpenYard is kind of a new project, so it, it only have an age of about six months. Um, it's kind of a, it, it has a small community at this moment. Um, uh, we are still trying to uh, use a kind of normal uh, or standard way of the driving the project of going. Uh, we, we will have a quarterly based release and uh, we set up a kind of roughly six month roadmap. Uh, currently, uh, we will have a, a bi-weekly meeting uh, nowadays. Um, so every meeting, roughly, we have about 20 attend attendees at this moment. Um, be and, and thanks for the CNCF because um, it, it, once it, it accepts to the, after donate, donate you know, open up to CNCF, we got more chance to collaborate with other you know, companies. Uh, now we have a kind of uh, interaction with Intel, VML, and an Avano group. Uh, we are trying to, they, they're also very interested in this project and they, they, we, are, we are trying to align our interests together. And they're trying to contribute to the project as well. Uh, yeah, and that's all for today. So, yeah, um, thanks for letting me present it, and I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you, thank you for presenting. Uh, very good presentation. And uh, so, uh, one more question. One more question about the the adoption. So, are, are there any? Is there anybody uh, using the project already? I mean, you, you mentioned like people using it for, or the use cases for AI, CDN. So yeah. are any of these um, people who are contributing uh, using it or, or other people that are, that are not necessarily contributing? Yeah, so, 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 um, so a few things. So basically we have uh, internally in Alibaba Cloud, there is a product, a cloud product, which is not entirely built based on the op open source version of OpenYard. They are pretty much the same. So, and, and all the customer of that product, you can say that they are directly using the OpenYard at, the, at this moment. 
So which which is the philosophy that we have, we try to, you know, make sure everything is consistent so then the, we can apply the same, you know, quality um, to the project and, and in, in, so make, make, make sure, make sure this project is kind of production ready um, at that stage, so. Okay, got it. And, and is there anything the, the community is, is doing to to get more adoption, uh, like reaching out to some places who are uh, having this these challenges? And sure, sure. So the, that's a reason uh, we are say, saying that if you look at the, the collaborator, so so we so it is it, kind of uh, nature. So Intel, VMware, they 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 are looking, they're coming to us to say they have a similar use cases either in their production line or, or in their so pretty much in, the, in their production line so all the intel and the vml have their own you know solutions to handle the edge computing it, it, it's not a new problem it's a long-standing problem and they build their own solutions already um, but the problem is they cannot um they cannot find the good collaboration with the, the kubernetes community because their solution are pretty much standalone and they they, they, they are not built for Kubernetes, for sure. So they are trying to find the you know the collaboration to uh, to integrate with their solution with the solution in the Kubernetes. That's why they they reach out the Open Yard. Um, the primary reason they choose Open Yard or not choosing the Kubi Edge, or, or maybe they have tried, is because of the compatibility. They like our design of not breaking the API compatibility. So this, I I would say this is the biggest difference, and that's that, that, okay. why they're trying to approach us. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you for presenting. Um, uh, looking forward to to the project uh, growing and getting more adoption. Yeah, of course. It's already in the CNCF. So I think I think yeah, we probably will leverage the power of CNCF in a more you know <laughs> nice way uh, because uh, this is a good platform to 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 let people know this project and and we are trying to yeah. So that um. The, 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 well, some of the problem is that if you look at our meeting, it's kind of Asian Pacific time, you know, friendly. So uh, now uh, it is not a very, because nowadays most of the customer, even for this collaborator, they're, ch they're coming from the China side. Um, but I do, I, I, I leave my, you know, connection information if you need. So uh, we have a Slack channel. So people may just, if they couldn't attend a meeting, uh, we, they can connect me and I can point you all the, Meeting records or ask me the question directly. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can send me. I'm on Slack on a CNCF Slack, so you oh. can send me that information, and I can post it on the meeting notes here. So basically, to add more, yeah, sure. uh, details and people how to contact you and. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, the Slack is uh, Open has its own Slack channel, so if people if you they they just visit the, the GitHub, they can get it. So. Yeah, but yeah. you do have your own Slack. I mean, but uh, yeah. Oh. Oh. You, sure. you do, or, or you do, or you don't, or you just use this CNC. I have, I have, I have but uh, I, yeah, I, but I, 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 would, I would say the same thing. So you, if you send a message in the Yara Slack channel, I'm going to see it. <laughs> okay, perfect. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, happy holidays and yeah. yeah. Okay, that's all for today. Okay. Yep. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>